I'm Lindy Hollenbeck, and welcome back to Women Taking on Sports here on ESPN Chattanooga 95.3. And we talk all things female athletes here, from athletes, coaches, to even women working in the sports industry. And today, we are in the presence of Team USA two-time senior world champion medalist and junior world champion, a Team USA athlete, Olivia Reeves. Olivia, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Olivia, I want to start out by talking a little bit about what got you into weightlifting. I mean, out of all the sports, why did you choose such a tough sport like weightlifting? Well, so my parents went to CrossFit gym to that 2012 through 2019. And in that, I did CrossFit kids, CrossFit teens for years. And I wanted to be to get better at CrossFit. So my mom knew my coach and Steve Fowler in the area. He did seminars and stuff like for other people in the gym. And I did one and I was like, well, like, I think this can help me get better at CrossFit as I'm like 12 years old. <laughs> so it was September in 2015. I then, then decided um, I would do lifting in addition to CrossFit. So after my CrossFit kids class, I'd go and do lifting with Steve. And after that, it was like, I think I'm pretty good at this and I think I'll stick with it. Yeah, obviously you've been pretty good. So that kind of goes into my next question. I want to know what it was like competing in the USA Weightlifting Championship. In nationals or a world championship? World championship. Um, it's crazy because <laughs> you watch the videos and then it, it looks like so big or like such a big deal. But when you're in it, you're not really you're not looking at all that. Mm -hmm. But it's super cool to be on teams with um, athletes and women that I've looked up to that mm -hmm. are still competing and at the same level and now that I'm at a level with them it's cool to compete with them and see people internationally too that mm -hmm. I look up to. Well what about the national championship that you competed in last year so how did that go? That went that was has been my best meet to date I've yet <laughs> to top that one. Um, I always love competing nationally because I think there's a little bit more recognition sometimes. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like a, a big deal a little bit because people in the U.S., they like know who you are, and it's just fun to be in that atmosphere and and see that. Well, your performance did get a lot of attention in that national competition. So you set a new American record. I did at the time. It was a senior American record and junior American record. Now I believe Meredith Allwine topped it for senior, but I still hold the junior American record. For okay. That. Well, so you you held a record for the clean and jerk. Is that correct? Correct. Explain to the people who have no idea what that is. I did watch a video, and okay. holy cow, it is so impressive. <laughs> and I'm looking at you now. I can definitely see how you can do that. But that is a lot of weight. So it was 138 kilograms. Is that yes, what you— Yes, Okay. That's, that's a lot. Yes, 138 clean and jerk. 138 is, I want to say 306. Six, maybe 305 pounds. Okay. I think 39 is 306. Um, so one kilo is 2.2 .2 pounds. Simple conversion. Uh, the clean and jerk in it, the lift, you take the bar from the ground to the front rack position all the way in a squat uh -huh. and then stand it up and then you jerk it overhead, which is just a short dip. And then your feet can split or mm. they can go to the side. Doesn't matter. The bar has to end up overhead. Okay, so I also need to rewind and mention that you were 19 years old when you set this record. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so how does it feel accomplishing something of that magnitude at such a young age? Well, so that was my first, I think, junior American record. Um, in 20, I want to say 2018, I set my first youth American record. And I've been, I mean, a junior, junior American record is a big deal, but... I've been doing it a hot minute. That was probably my fourth or fifth national championship mm -hmm. um, doing that. So, I mean, yes, it's a big deal. But at the time, I'm just I'm just trying to make lifts. And mm -hmm. the, the lifts happen to be records. Yeah, so I'm curious, was competing at this type of level your goal from the very beginning when you got involved in CrossFit and weightlifting? No, um, not at all, I don't think. I just simply enjoyed the sport. I enjoyed lifting and competitions and I enjoy training and I still do enjoy all of that stuff, mm -hmm. which makes it a lot easier to be my job pretty much. But no, I don't think I ever was like, yes, I want to go to the Olympics at 12, which yes, I like, that's super cool, but it was never like set in my it mind. It just happened. I, yeah. Just destiny. Mm -hmm. So explain to the listeners what goes through your mind before a competition. For competition, I'm usually envisioning my lifts. <laughs> Because Steve and I will come up with a plan. Like, I know exactly what I'm going to do, starting with the bar. So Steven's your I coach. Will. I read about that. Yes. Okay. 
Defour. And uh, so I know I know what's going to happen. I practice it in training. Mm -hmm. uh, I just do it on the. So I envision my lifts, what I'm going to do from like the moment that I, how I'm going to chalk up my hands and then walk up to the bar and what I'm going to look at, like all that stuff. So it feels like I've already done it mm. kind of deal. Um, but usually I'm focusing on a cue or two to help me, um, like something that I need to technically to focus on. Okay. So when we're talking about the clean and jerk and then that moment where you lift it, what yeah. goes through your mind right before you pick up that heavy SOB? <laughs> <laughs> Um, stay over the bar, stay over the bar, stay over the bar, because I really need to stay over the bar so that I don't pull back. Yes. So I'm, I'm literally just repeating a phrase in my head. For a while, it was just like, you can do it, you can do it, you can do yeah. it. Yeah, you got to pad realized, yourself up. Yeah, I got to focus on something a little bit more that I can feel like I have some sort of control in this situation. Definitely. So I'm sure there's a lot of room for injury in this sport. How do you prevent your injuries? Um, yeah, so a lot of people think that. I think that if you're doing it right and you have a good coach, weightlifters don't get injured very often. Um, it's only mm. those videos you see on Instagram <laughs> of people doing stupid that stuff. That traumatizes everybody else. Yeah, so not to say, like, I've seen people do lifts, great lifters, and it ends up tweaking something or something wrong, but mm -hmm. uh, the real thing is just to prevent overuse injuries. Right. And that's when having a good coach um, who knows their athlete and can recognize, hey, today looked really heavy. Maybe we don't go to 90% today. Maybe we back off a little bit. And to see that day to day, really, that's that's what helps prevent injuries, I think, is a, is a great coach. That's very good point. Very good point. Got to start with the people that are actually coaching you and teaching you how to do things the correct way, huh? Yes. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Well, in 2021, you won gold and became the junior world champion. I did. Yes. How did that make you feel? Uh, it made me feel weird because uh, that was my <laughs> first real international competition because I didn't do any in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then 2019, I did my first international, but that was in Las Vegas at Youth Nationals. And it doesn't really feel like you're going anywhere because you're just in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Um, so it was it was very, <coughs> very Excuse surreal. Me. And I'm very proud of that performance. And yeah, it's probably one of my favorite competitions to date to look back on. Well, you do have a lot to be proud of because you made it to the podium in all four of your international competitions. Correct. I have, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I've never walked away from a competition. <laughs> wow. What an accomplishment. That's amazing. So what would you owe your athleticism? Who would you owe that to? Um, my coach, <laughs> uh -huh. my coach, my family. Um, pretty much, I think that talent only goes so far mm -hmm. in, in any sport. Anybody can be talented, but if you don't apply that, then nothing nothing's going to happen, really. That's exactly you right. You can only get so far with that. So, really, <coughs> very much appreciates everything that Steve does for me as an athlete, um, all the sacrifices that we, we both made, as well as my family and... Um, sacrifice that they made like in the beginning just the time that it takes to drive me and my sister she also lives mm -hmm. to to train and then to sit there because I can't drive I'm like 13 so to sit there for an hour hour and a half while I train <coughs> and all that stuff that without that or even paying paying for Steve to be my coach things mm -hmm. like that that I'm very very grateful for well being 20 years old now and 19 at the time when you were doing all these things how do you balance being a 19 year old and a student and doing all this with team ESA yeah so <laughs> oh yeah yeah that. I'm also yeah well <laughs> so my freshman year of college I went to University of Alabama at Birmingham for a year which was great and I loved the school however I did four competitions in that year and was not happy with my performance. They were like still good competitions and I meddled, but I I could be better. I could be a better lifter and training remotely when I just like send, Steve sends me programming and then I'll like send videos back and we'll go back and forth about my lifts. Mm -hmm. It's just not accomplishing as much as I needed it to. Mm -hmm. So therefore I transferred and now I'm at UTC, which I'll finish out the rest of my college there. Um, so I think that's a big one is recognizing that I there changes have to be made and sacrifices have to be made. Mm -hmm. And to still have that balance of going to school, I can still lift and go to school. I don't need to stop going to school mm -hmm. to be a lifter. 
because then I think that that puts too much effort, emphasis and pressure <laughs> on me it's for this as a job. I need to have something else to mm-hmm. do. Um, so I think that changing and going to UTC has created a better balance to have a, a good lifting career and also have something else to do. Exactly. I couldn't agree more with you. Well, let's talk about the world championship in Greece, where you finished with a silver medal. Just yeah. one shy of the gold winner. Let's talk about that for a second. So that was Junior Worlds in Greece. So the year before, 2021, I had won Junior Worlds. And this is Junior Worlds 2022, where I got silver by one kilo. How painful was that? It's painful because I missed my first two clean and jerks at, um, I think it was 128, 128, 129, or something like that. I missed my first two jerks. And I was like, what the heck? What? My last warm up was 125, and that went very good. So and smooth, huh? Yeah. And then I get out there and I'm like, I can't make a jerk. So it's a little frustrating in that for that competition, but I, I, I it, it, with every competition, you can walk away learning something. Exactly. And after winning it in 2021, you could definitely say I was a little cocky, being like, yeah, like I could do this again. And I could have. Mm hmm but I was one kilo shy because I did not make my lifts. Well, I'm sure the next time you go in for that clean and jerk and you do it <laughs> flawlessly, it'll yeah. make it just that more, much more special. I mean, everyone I has to mess up and then coming back from a mess up, it's kind of what builds people's character. Don't you yeah, agree? I, I definitely agree. I think that with like every performance, you take something away from mm-hmm. it. And with that one is I just need to, to make the weight on the bar. Just it's my job to lift the weight and it's... Mm-hmm. Steve and I's job to figure out what weight that is, and I just need to do it. Yes. Well, I'm curious, what's one of the biggest misconceptions that women get that are in weightlifting? Um, I've heard somebody else be asked this question, and I really liked their response. They <laughs> said that they think everybody thinks that a weightlifters are so aggressive or, uh-huh. like, just so... Not sure. Like, yeah, like aggressive or like, I don't want to get in a fight with you because you'd beat me up. And it's like, no, I don't know the first thing about fighting. My job is to lift weights. So I think that's an interesting thing that I get told, like, oh, I wouldn't want to make you mad or something. It's like, Uh, okay. So you're not all tough all the time. That's what we're hearing. Not at all. No, I don't think that being aggressive has anything to do with the amount of weight that you can lift. Yeah. I agree. Well, why do you think it's important to celebrate women in sports? I think that, well, I mean, specifically in weightlifting, women have only been in the Olympics for weightlifting since 2000. Mm. So there are still so many things that we can accomplish and do for the sport that haven't haven't been done before. Whereas we've seen men's weightlifting. Yeah, that mm-hmm. happened. That's been happening forever. But women's weightlifting, this stuff, this is interesting. I couldn't agree more. When I've watched your videos and read about your story, I was just intrigued. I was thinking, what a strong and confident young woman. I mean, it has to take a lot of confidence to kind of break through with this industry. Don't you agree? I agree. I think it takes a lot of, you don't realize how much confidence you have to have on the mm-hmm. platform until you don't have it. And when you don't have it, you it's, it's difficult. It's difficult for me because I feel... Specifically, my last competition, I had on the bar was 141 for clean and jerk, a weight that I needed to make a total to be ranked on the OQR. And I've done this clean, but not the jerk before. And walking up there, not knowing if I was going to make it and feeling like I had already missed the lift before I'd even attempt it. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't have any confidence and I felt really like embarrassed to attempt this lift because I knew I was going to miss it. And so there's things like that psychologically plays a big role in um, anything to do with competing, I think. I completely agree. And I was talking to a coach, and he said in an interview, the most important person that my players are going to talk to today are themselves. And that resonated with me because I couldn't agree more because especially with you and your sport, it's just you, solo. Yeah. So you are literally sport. talking to yourself. There's no team aspect. You oh, and yeah. Steve only. Yep. So the big, the most important person you're going to talk to in a competition is yourself. And you can either psych yourself up or kind of psych yourself out. Definitely. Yep. 
it's funny. You can watch like any video of weightlifters as they chalk up and then they walk to the platform and usually like you can see them talking to themselves. <sighs> They're saying something. They'll do something with their art, like something that it's just them and the bar, right? Like on the platform. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So what's the chalk for? Is it just to hold on to the yep. bar more so you don't slip? It just gets you a better grip? Just like gymnasts use chalk oh, on the bars. Same, same concept. Thing. Okay. Well, do you feel a sense of pride competing in weightlifting as a female? Definitely. Um, I think a pride of what I've accomplished and I think how I've accomplished it, all these things. Um, I feel proud that of what I get to do for for Team USA and proud that I get to be a part of a group that is so supportive. All the athletes on Team USA are very supportive of each other and it's a great environment, I think. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, you do have so much to be proud of and all the places that you've been able to visit and travel at such a young age, that has to be just amazing to experience. Yes, I also get this question a lot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're traveling everywhere. It must be so much fun to go on vacation. That's not vacation, huh? It's not vacation. <laughs> it is not vacation. Um, a lot of the times I'm traveling, I still have to watch my weight and mm. things like that. If I'm going to a country like Colombia, there are, it's actually kind of stressful. Team USA, they help. They have their whole like dietitian and stuff to help with all this, but. It's like you're going somewhere for a work trip. Mm -hmm. And if you're going for a work trip, you're not going to do all the fun stuff until after you compete. You're not a tourist. Exactly. I'm not here to do all that stuff. I can after I compete. But then again, I'm not in charge of my flights and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's when they're um, the travel person. They book my flights and things like that. So I'm I'm there to lift and that's my job. And then I, I go home. So it's cool to visit these countries and see all these things. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely know places I don't want to go or maybe want to go back to. Right. That helps. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is not exactly a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you? Next is Senior Worlds in Saudi Arabia. September. It's like the first of September kind of first. Of, yeah. But before that, we actually because Saudi Arabia has the time change and everything, Team USA is doing a training camp in Paris because that's where the Olympics is, is in 2024 as a acclimation camp before we go to Saudi Arabia. So I'll be like in Paris for a week and then we'll fly to Saudi. Mm, okay. Well, how can people follow your career? Um, I have an Instagram. That's pretty much all I think all I have. Okay. Um, What's the handle or what's the name of your Instagram? OliviaReeves.71. Okay, simple enough. Mm -hmm. Well, if you spoke to a young girl who was thinking about getting involved in weightlifting, what would you tell her? To have fun. I think the, everybody says it, but if you don't enjoy it, then why are you doing it? And if you have fun and you enjoy competing and lifting and doing the work, well, then it you can compete nationally. You can compete internationally. I think it's most important that you enjoy what you're doing. And if you don't, well, then either that this is not for you. Find something else that you enjoy. Or maybe it's a coach or something else, but find something you really, really like to do. Mm -hmm. Got to have fun with it, huh? Well, my last question for you, is there anything else that you would like the public, your fellow competitors, <laughs> anything you would like people to know about you and your career in weightlifting? Um, not, I mean, not really. I've done a lot of interviews. I saw the people. I've said all the things. Um, yeah, I like I started lifting when I was 12 and everybody thinks you got to start like super duper young. You don't really have to. I 12 think is pretty young, huh? I What's the average? I don't know. 12 is pretty young to it's me. It's pretty young. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's just the environment, like recognize that I didn't just walk into a gym one day. It was the environment that I was mm -hmm. raised in and ex things I had exposure to prior to that and during my career that I think makes me such a great lifter. It's not just going in the gym every day and doing that. There are so many other things that go into it that not everybody sees, I think. Very true. Well, I'm a big fan. I'm so impressed with your work and so proud, and you have a lot to be proud of. I'm Lundy Hollenbeck, and a huge thank you to Olivia Reeves. That does it for this episode of Women Taking on Sports here on ESPN Chattanooga 95.3.